so glad you're my partner in crime. As long as you're my partner in time. Insert groan here. It's nice Rachel we're having. <laughs> what? I mean weather. It's nice weather. Oh yeah, we need a... Team signal. Totally. I'm gonna be super wolf. What's your super name, Sean? Does your brother know about your... issues? Is that an official interview question, Dr. Lin? Alex, you know that I care about you. With everything that has happened... I just want what's best for you. Before we start this video, I want to let everyone know that I'm doing a small Life is Strange giveaway. The prize is a sealed copy of Life is Strange and a Life is Strange comic. All you have to do is like this video and comment down below why you love Life is Strange so much. The winner will be announced on my Instagram soon. Life is Strange True Colors is a game that I anticipated on playing after the first trailer released. Even though I loved Life is Strange 2, this game seemed to give me vibes similar to the first Life is Strange. I'm sure, like many others, I was super excited to play this game and see the story unravel. After playing it for the first time, I actually enjoyed it. But after finishing it, I didn't feel motivated or desired to jump back into it like the other games. And usually when it's an easy platinum trophy, I'm all for it. I know in my spoiler-free review I talked highly about this game, and yeah, I can't lie, I did enjoy it. And I think a lot of LIS fans would too. Not everyone liked Before the Storm because of its plot inconsistencies, and even though I know it has its major flaws, I still love that game. But playing True Colors a second time made me realize that this game does have a lot of issues as well, and they ultimately outweigh the positives. In this entry, you follow a character named Alex Chen. Alex is moving to Haven Springs to live with her brother Gabe and to ultimately have a fresh start at life. Early on in the game, we find out that Alex has a power. She can read the auras of other people and understand what they're feeling. She can also get so deep into their emotions and take control of them herself, most of the time. The first episode basically introduces us to all of the characters in the town itself. If I'm being honest, getting through this episode a second time felt pretty boring. Some scenes ran for too long, and it takes a while to finally get to the point. I think the real reason why I'm going to critique this game harder than the others is due to what you're getting for your money. All the episodes in the previous games were $4.99, and to make it even better, usually the first episode is free. This game has an average runtime of 6 to 8 hours for a whopping $59.99. The game also runs 30 FPS, which they never talked about when advertising this game. And there's load screens every time you enter a new area. This is not what you call a PS5 game in my book. The game also has a DLC called Wavelengths, which should have been free but is not, and must be purchased separately or with a deluxe edition when first purchasing the game. I purchased the Ultimate Edition so I'd only have to pay $10 for the remasters of LIS 1 and Before the Storm. Also, by the way, the remastered edition is $40 and being treated like new games instead of making it an add-on for the original. Damn, Square Enix must be broke. Enough of getting sidetracked. The first episode finally gets some juicy moments with Alex losing control of her power and beating up a guy named Mac that got into a fight with Gabe. I read Riley's phone. I know you've been meeting with her behind my back. It's not what you think, Mac. Towards the end of this episode, a kid named... Jesus Christ, what's the name of this kid again? Ah, yes, Ethan, has ran off and is the son of a woman named Charlotte, who is Gabe's girlfriend. Ethan decided it was a great day to hike out to the mountains the same day Typhon Mining was in the area assembling a blast charge in the mines near the Haven. Gabe contacts Mac, since he works with Typhon, to hold off the blast since they're out looking for Ethan. While Alex, Gabe, and Ryan, which is Gabe's best friend, go look for Ethan, they find him on a corner of a rock, scared to death since he can't cross the other side in the area. Alex goes to save him and uses her power to try to reassure him and make him feel better. After they make it across the bridge, everyone sighs in relief until a whole lot of rumbling starts. 
We turn to see a whole bunch of boulders running through the mountains. Everyone tries to take cover, but Gabe is hit with a rock. Alex is chained to him after using his weight to keep her safe while rescuing Ethan. It leaves Ryan no other choice to whip out his knife and cut the rope so Alex doesn't die along with Gabe. I can say that the acting was really freaking good here. And I can say that about the whole game. Everyone did a great job making all of the characters' performances realistic and fun to watch. The graphics were also upgraded this time too, with great motion capture as it was easy to tell what the character was feeling, giving each scene a better sense of realism. But even if we couldn't know their feelings by their expressions, we have auras to tell it for us. To finally sum up the next episode, and really the rest of the game, you, Ryan, and returning character from before the storm, Steph, all team up to find out who killed Gabe. And no, not The Rock, but the people behind The Rocks, Typhon. As everyone in the town is mourning the death of Gabe, this is where you as the character get to explore and connect more with your side characters. Riley and Eleanor run the flower shop, Jed runs the bar, who is widely praised by the town for being a hero because he saved a bunch of miners from a mine a few years ago. Oh, and he's Ryan's father. Charlotte runs the weed shop and Steph runs the record shop. One thing that I can say is super underwhelming about this game was the lack of exploration to the town of Haven Springs. While the area is stunning and fully detailed, it is way too small. There's a cutoff on both sides of the area that leads to everyone's houses. This would have been so great to explore since you're in the same area for the whole game. Life is Strange 1 had a large campus inside and out, Chloe's house, the beach, lighthouse, and dark room. Before the storm had Chloe and Rachel's house, the school, and the junkyard. And Life is Strange 2 had a whole lot of places, you get my point. For $60, I think that the map could have been greatly expanded to more than just one little strip. And it's a shame because there was so much potential. The third episode starts off with Ryan, Steph, and Alex trying to find a new way to distract a Typhon worker named Diane in the bar to find some more information of the death of Gabe. While distracting Diane, they're able to retrieve a flash drive with valuable information on the situation. The rest of the episode was mostly a nod to previous Life is Strange fans, having the rest of the episode of a Monsters or Mortals game ran by the one and only Steph. I guess with the recent tragedy and the sadness that were the last two episodes, it was nice to have a happy episode. But was it necessary? Uh, I mean, <laughs> not, not really. I mean, it's half of an episode that doesn't really add to the plot except for the ending. And it also doesn't help that this game is super short and half of that time could have been used to advancing the plot. I can say they do have some good foreshadowing with Jed being a good guy then becoming the bad guy you must defeat in the game. The fourth episode is where you start to get personal relationships with some characters. In an IGN review for this game, they gave this game a 9 out of 10. They also stated that both romance options felt rewarding in their own way. Listen, I love Alex. I think she's a really strong protagonist. I loved Ryan and Steph and their whole chemistry with each other. I think they were the perfect trio, but the romance options felt super lackluster in their own way. First of all, for $60, we only got one kiss per character. Like, damn, $60, give me a little more. We get to see their relationship grow, quote unquote, but at the same time, it felt like there was something missing at the end. Another thing I didn't like, based on your ending, was one of your friends leaving, deciding on who you choose. If you decide to romance Steph, by the end, the relationship between Alex and Ryan seemed to fall off, which really sucks. And if you romance Ryan, Steph leaves, but the way she leaves makes it look like she's doing it out of anger for not getting into that relationship with Alex. I personally just don't like the way they handled all their friendships at the end. Just because one person's dating another doesn't mean that you guys can't all be friends. Back to episode 4. We get to see how Typhon wants this case to get shut down really quickly. The town's cop, Officer Pike, also finds out that you kind of stole Typhon information from Diane. Here, Alex thinks that Officer Pike is going to help you out in this situation, but does a complete 180 and tells you to sign Typhon's paper so Diane won't press charges. Here you have the option to sign or not sign the paper. 
The story will most likely play out the same way whether you choose to sign it or take Pike's fear. Just like in previous Life is Strange games, there are some things that might alter different scenes, like taking Charlotte's anger or letting her be, might determine how she feels about you in the end. We find out that Jed is actually the bad guy all along. Ooh. So as Alex uncovers this mystery, Jed shoots her, making her fall into a giant hole. Alex magically survives from this fall, and her glasses are still in mint condition. Episode 5 goes more in depth with the relationship between Alex and her brother Gabe, her living past and basically finding out that her father used to work with Jed, and how he got him and a whole bunch of other men killed, while everyone thought he was a hero. As Alex magically survives the 3,000 foot fall, she gets back to Jed's bar to confront him. And what do you know? Nobody believes her. Even with her literally limping with scratches and dirt all over her. Depending on your past choices, Charlotte and Eleanor will believe you, your best friend or girlfriend Steph will stand by you, and Ryan will either say you're full of shit and switch up on you, or stand by your side. Here, you're able to use your power to your full extent and get inside Jed's mind to find out what went wrong in the mines. You'll be able to forgive him or not, but it's up to you. I personally chose to forgive him since I feel like he needed that the most, and honestly, that would make him realize the hurt and pain he caused while keeping this a secret for so long. There are six endings this time around, unlike LIS 2 that had four and LIS that had two, which I thought is much better than having two, but they're all really similar. The options are you staying or leaving Haven Springs by yourself with Ryan or with Steph. So realistically, there are like three different endings just depending on your location and characters. So, was the power good in this game? I think it was a pretty cool concept and I didn't have a problem with it. It's cool that we get back to using powers after LIS 2 and before the storm. Did choices matter? For some cases and characters, yes. But if we're talking about endings, not really. You're gonna get the same thing either way. The side character stories in this game were heavily expanded unlike previous titles. You could connect more with these small characters, have more talking options, and even get to know more about them. During your time at Haven Springs, you meet these two characters that like each other but won't admit their feelings. I think it's cool how you can read their auras and help them out and connect with them. It's the little details like this in the game that I thought were really cool. There was also really good music in this game, but the sad part is that I didn't download one song, and the LIS games are known for their music. Every other game I have downloaded songs from, these somehow didn't really stick. They weren't bad though. I think if the game also expanded on time, and digging deeper with the romance options, bigger town, more plot twists, this game could have been so much better. Like imagine what they could have done if they took out monsters or mortals and left that for the DLC, or just making it shorter. Ah, <sighs> and now we finally get to the Wavelengths DLC. That was not free, but an add-on to the games. This was something else that was very underwhelming and had so much potential to do better. You follow Steph throughout the seasons and do not leave the record store, which sucks. You also have to complete tasks and it's all around pretty tedious and not as enjoyable as I thought it would be. You also have these little Easter eggs where Steph talks about Chloe and Rachel, which I thought was pretty cool. I would have loved to see a little more though. You also get to talk with Mikey, which was also really cool, getting to talk to an old friend. I think Katie Bentz did a great job reviving Steph, and I'm super impressed with her work on True Colors. Like I said before, that really goes for the whole cast too. With the nicer graphics, the team really did give it their all with the realistic performances, which I loved. The DLC, I feel a casual player can skip, but if you're an LIS fan, it wouldn't hurt to try. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I feel like every time I talk about Life is Strange on this channel, it's never on a positive light. But trust me all, I love these games so much. What were your thoughts on True Colors? Did you guys enjoy it or do you think that it was a flawed game? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to comment down below what you love about the Life is Strange games in order to be entered into the giveaway. Hope to see you guys soon. Peace.